for a small sum of $12 billion, we could transform the United States into renewable energy, combining not just agriculture, but saving water and solar panels all together, folks. Just $12 billion, that's it. That's your price tag. Today's video, guys, I'm gonna talk to you about how green new energy is not only extremely expensive, it's also detrimental to the environment. We're moving out of production farmland and ranch land and why that should bother you. Hello everyone, my name is Sam and I'm gonna walk you through some very important just found out facts. And it all starts with the Joshua tree. Who knew that this little tree would bring to the forefront the dynamics behind destroying the earth and ecosystems to save the earth, right? Doesn't make much sense. And it doesn't to the thousands of people who have jumped on the bandwagon to save this beautiful plant. A tree isn't even a tree at all. It's a flowering plant and part of the agave family. Joshua trees grow between an elevation of two and 6,000 feet and are found mainly in the Mojave Desert. Joshua trees grow zero to three inches a year, depending on the amount of rainfall. The plant receives its name from the Mormon people, who said that it resembled the prophet Joshua as he led his flock into the Promised Land. The Joshua tree is the largest yucca and was once thought to be a member of the lily family until DNA proved otherwise. It takes 60 years for a tree to mature and grows to about 20 feet tall. Most trees live to be about 500 years old, but the oldest Joshua tree is over a thousand years old. The tree is going extinct. Extinct, folks. There's only so many thousands left in America. And right now, the craziest thing is that California decided that even though this tree was on their Endangered Species Act, they were going to let none other than a solar farm raise acres and acres of these trees to bring in renewable energy. It's just mind blowing. Like how can you say that this is okay this tree is iconic in the in the sense that it's in a fragile ecosystem okay it provides a little shade in an area that trees can't grow it needs very little water in an area water doesn't flow not to mention when the soil's disturbed especially in this part of california you get something called valley fever folks and valley fever is so bad you can't tell if you got it or if you got COVID. It provides habitat, it provides food. And by destroying this ancient tree that has held its own in a desert to put up some solar panels or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought the green new energy was to save the earth. But this isn't the only incidence that this is happening. There are so many recorded run-ins between solar farms and actual ecosystems and agriculture that it's, it's mind-blowing. So do you know what this company did? We're gonna take 215,000 acres of grazeland out of rotation. Out of rotation, public land, we're gonna buy it. And we're not gonna let anybody graze on it anymore. We're gonna take that out of production to make up for the trees. You see in this blue map, this is a forest, folks. <laughs> in the middle of the desert, I might add. And we're gonna take these almost thousand year old trees down. And we're just gonna take out, you know, ranch land out of rotation. That's how, that's how we're gonna mitigate. Don't you like that word, mitigate? That's their new thing. I brought that to you recently with Bill Gates. 
he mitigates his carbon footprint. You know, owning those private jets really puts out that CO2. And him and his family, he mitigates his carbon footprint by donating upwards of $5 million a year to green renewable source projects. Well, what does that look like for you and I? What happens, folks? The day you go to get in your little electric car and crank it up, and this little computer says, Miss Starkey, you have hit your carbon footprint for the month, and my car turns off. Does it matter that, say, you know, I've got an emergency with my dog and I need to get to the vet immediately? And I'm trying to negotiate with the AI. We'll, we'll take some carbon steps next month, dude. I've got to get to the hospital. My mom fell and broke her wrist. We're sorry. We'll just let, call me an ambulance. No, ma'am, I'm sorry. Your carbon footprint has been met for the month. Now, it sounds far-fetched and it sounds sci-fi. But who would have ever thought that in 2024, America would seriously be considering giving up 1% of the $1.2 trillion federal budget to convert agricultural farms into, ready for this, agrivoltaic farms. Watch this clip with me, folks. You guys think I'm joking, but this speaks volumes about what's coming for you and coming for me at a price tag of $12 billion. And since the federal government isn't a business and can't generate money, who pays for that? Who's paying that $12 billion? That's what I thought. Agriculture uses an enormous amount of resources. It takes a lot of water and energy to grow our food. 85% of the global water resource consumption is used for irrigation and one third of greenhouse gas emissions Sounds are attributed too good to, be true, to agriculture. Doesn't it? At the same time, demand for food is only growing. The global population, currently at 7.5 billion, is estimated to reach 9.8 billion by 2050. We will need to nearly double our current food production to meet that demand. We will also need to improve access to food, reduce food waste, and address inequities related to food deserts. Food is complicated and an approach to a dynamic and sustainable Guess food not system worried is about multifaceted. Hurricanes, are they? Let's focus on the future production and resource management side of the equation. Or tornadoes. Looking at the water issue alone, with the current agricultural methods, there will be nowhere near enough water to grow the needed level of food production by 2050. Finish this thrilling video for you guys. If you like to support our channel, what we do here, we were demonetized. You can do that. It's a top link in comments. We appreciate you guys rowing in our boat. It helps my husband understand how I can spend hours a day educating myself and the world on what they're really doing with our water. Now, let me just put this scenario out there for you. 50% of water, I love you too, of water is being used for agriculture, okay? They always leave out the fact that um, in California, in a desert, this borax mine is using 300 million gallons of water a year. See, cobalt, borax, any of those mining companies, I guess you wanna call them, or developments that we need for all this new green energy, folks, those places use considerable amounts of water. And the water that they give back to the community is always toxic. I brought that to you earlier today. So keep in mind that though this propaganda is put together very well, it is all propaganda. Agriculture uses an enormous amount of resources. It takes a lot of water and energy to grow our food. 85% of the global water resource consumption is used for irrigation, and one third of greenhouse gas emissions are attributed to agriculture. At the same time, demand for food is only growing. The global population currently at 7.5 billion, is estimated to reach 9.8 billion by 2050. We will need to nearly double our current food production to meet that demand. We will also need to improve access to food, reduce food waste, and address inequities related to food deserts. Food is complicated, and an approach to a dynamic and sustainable food system is multifaceted. Let's focus on the future production and resource management side of the equation. 
Looking at the water issue alone, with the current agricultural methods, there will be nowhere near enough water to grow the needed level of food production by 2050. And we are all aware of the high cost of fossil fuels on our wallets and on the environment. If the status quo remains, we will likely be looking at food shortages, which in turn could cause social unrest and potential economic collapse. Agriculture has always adapted to meet the dynamic needs of a changing society. Innovations in technology have driven incredible progress over time, from tractors and pest management to breeding and genomics. Most growers are accustomed to exploring new methods of addressing emerging challenges in agriculture and continue to look for ways to mitigate risks brought on by a changing climate. Water, energy, and agriculture are the bedrock of modern civilization. And while many technologies have advanced these components separately, Few have aimed to address all three components at once. It is time to step back and reimagine their relationship. Enter agrivoltaics. This new technology promises to improve food production and reduce water use, while also creating energy and additional revenue. The solar panels are placed on the same land where crops are grown, allowing growers to harvest the power of the sun twice. A recent OSU study estimates that converting just 1% of American farmland to agrivoltaics could meet our national renewable energy targets and save water and create a sustainable long-term food system. It will also create new revenue opportunities for family farms which are currently facing increased economic challenges, with a 23% increase in bankruptcy filings over the past year. The solar panels also help plants grow more efficiently by needing less water. See, plants have an upper limit on how much sun they can actually use. It's called the light saturation point. Beyond that point, any additional sun doesn't increase photosynthesis. It doesn't help the plant grow. It simply increases the plant's water demand. It makes the plants sweat and it makes them more thirsty. I brought you a video about how plants absorb water and how they release water. In fact, I'm currently writing a book about learning to grow food under a poisoned sky, folks. And I'm gonna to talk to you about watering climate friendly watering because let me explain something to you we're not out of water there's something called primary water sources in the earth and one day soon coming up if you guys send the love and i know that you like these topics i will deep dive into that for you but you might have noticed in the video background you are looking at my garden that doesn't even really resemble what a garden looks like yet. This is a market garden that produces thousands of pounds of organic, sustainably raised food. And the one thing you noticed, there's only one watering system in that whole quarter acre market garden. One little sprinkler. How does Sam do it in Southeast Louisiana when the temperatures are hitting 117 straight temperature in the summer, folks? Because I've learned to garden following God's examples and not gardening along the way that man tells me to. I live in a food desert. I understand what they're saying. I watch children like these go with insufficient nutrients because food stamps are used for things like Coke and candy and not organic vegetables. All I can tell you is that it's not a bad idea in sense, but what about the extreme weather events? We keep hearing and being told that we're having everywhere. What about this $12 billion investment? Who's paying for family farmers to convert over to a combination of solar panel farming, folks? Do you have the money for that? Because there was a time that Stephen and I looked at running our entire two acres off solar panels, right? Because our electric bill in the summer is $400 because my well is a 220 and it runs on my electric grid. And it was going to cost me out of pocket over $40,000 to be able to run this whole two acres, well included, on solar. That's not economical. I won't pay $40,000 in 10 years an electric bill. So why would I have a $400 electric bill and <clears throat> solar? And it would reduce my electric bill down like 80 bucks a month. So I'd still be paying 80 bucks plus 
like $500 for 10 years to pay off these solar panels. It was not worth it. It's not worth it. Yet they're forcing us to do it. So again, my question is, where's the water going? Why are cobalt and borax and copper and gold and all these big chemical companies able to rip apart the earth, pulling out precious minerals that the earth needs to create a toxic product, sell it back to you on another one of your dollars when we already have a system in place, folks, that has worked well for over a hundred years. You and I aren't destroying the earth. It's not you and me, so why are we paying the bill? I love you guys. Just something else for you to think about. Have a blessed, blessed day. Going to spend some time with my godchildren. Going to spend some time with my husband. Going to love on my puppy who had surgery. My mom's doing amazing. Thank you all for your prayers, your support. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, raise awareness. Let's save the Joshua Tree.